How can I help you? Uh, yeah, so my question is around um, a family member in active addiction. So uh, for me, it's extended family. It's my wife's, one of my wife's sisters. And uh, the parents are enabling the sister and the dad, actually. He's, he's starting to see some of these uh, tendencies. Like there's, he's starting to kind of see like, oh, there actually might be a bigger issue here. And, bigger uh, issue meaning there might be an addiction or there might be a bigger way to understand yeah. the addiction. Um, I think they just kind of thought she was down on her luck and like they kind of just were taking the responsibilities of her actions and wanted the rest of the family to do that. And yeah, um, yeah so I think he's starting to see like that they're – there probably is an actual addiction here. And on the weekend, we actually had a conversation about it, which was positive and good. And uh, I asked him if, if we had the opportunity to um, ask uh, a Christian psychologist that, you know, um, has the knowledge and the know-how and how to help in situations like this, what would you ask him? And he said, how do we get out of this mess? So I think that's a positive thing. How do we get out of really this mess? Before. I love that. I, <laughs> yeah. I love that question. How do we get out of this mess? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so am, am I that psychologist that you're asking how to get out of this mess? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know who you yeah. are, so I didn't say. I didn't say. Well, that's name. good. He, he, that's good. He, he'll, probably, he'll probably respect the answer a lot better. If he doesn't know me. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, but let me, I'm going to answer it very, very specifically in relation to, to the addiction. Um, many, 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 many times, you know, if you start with the premise that it's pretty much, it's pretty much impossible to be an addict without help. Now, just think about that sentence. Because by definition, addicts can't make their lives work. Right. So I got to have help to keep this thing going, right? We call that enabling. Somebody mm -hmm. enables this to continue down this path. So one of the things to... I don't want to get too black and white about this, but that's generally the pattern. You're going to find an addict. Somebody is enabling them to stay above the waterline, right? And so once you begin to really understand that, and this is what happened back in like the 60s or so um, when they started studying addiction, that they found, you know, we could get somebody sober in a treatment center, but they then send them home and that, there they go again you know, because the system, the family enables this in some way. So then they started treating the whole family. And that's, and then you get the emphasis like on all the groups that the family goes to because they find out they're part of this. In fact, one of my favorite verses, if you look at, uh, if you look at, uh, where is it? Uh, Leviticus 19, like 15 through 17, it says, it says, don't pervert justice. Don't be partial to the needy, nor defer to the great and powerful. But, you know, rebuke your neighbor, frankly. In other words, if it's somebody, you know, we look at an addict, oh, they're hurting, you know, they got these problems, let's give them more money, give them more, and we defer to them because they're needy, but we don't require them to be responsible with good boundaries and limits. Then what it says right after that is, if you don't, if you don't have those boundaries and limits, it says you share in the guilt of the problem. And that's what we find. Enablers are part of the problem when they're trying to help. Mm. And they don't realize, gosh, I'm just trying to help, but they don't realize, no, you're part of the problem. And on the other side of it, it says, don't defer to the great and powerful. In other words, have good limits and stand up, be a whistleblower, right? Stand up to power. So where we lose our boundaries are we over identify with people who are struggling and we give in a way that's not helping 
or we lose our boundaries when we're afraid of somebody. So it happens in both ways. That's why I say Mo Moses was the first addiction specialist. So what I think is really important is that I would find a way to get your, this is your father-in-law, right? That's correct. Yes. I would find a way to get him to just start with, get him to learn about, about how the addiction cycle works and the family enabling works because he's probably, if he doesn't understand this, he's probably not even aware of how enabling continues addictions. So I would, um, that's where I would, that's where I would actually start. I would say, look, why don't we go to, instead of figuring this out with us, how, how many addicts has this family treated? One, how successful are you? Zero, right? Hey, this family has, has a, has a long history of treating addicts, but they've only had one and they have no success. So why don't we not do that, dad, dad-in-law? Why don't we go talk to an addictions specialist who's treated hundreds, if not thousands, and let's see how they do it. Mm. That's what I would do. I would get him to a good, look, we're not going to take the sister. We're not even talking about her. Let's just go and let's go learn about this. And then the whole family comes together and they're on the same page. That's the most powerful, powerful thing you can do. If the whole family comes together and they're on the same page and they're not enabling this and they're learning how it works. And then the whole family, because they have the leverage, then the family can help in the way that really helps, which is I'm not going to continue to bail you out. But what I will do, if you want to get sober, I will help you to get connected to the people that can help you get sober. I'll help you get in into treatment in some way. That's the most powerful thing you can do. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Until the family gets well, it's going to be hard to get the addict well a lot of times. Great. Sometimes sometimes they'll hit bottom and you know, some good friends will do it or they'll go to you know, they'll go to a 12-step meeting or something where people will be honest with them, but the family the family it's always best when the family can be on the same page. All right? All right. Thank you so much. Okay, I hope that is helpful to you. You know, tell them to go to boundaries.me. There's uh, there's a lot of courses on there on codependency and enabling and dealing with addictions and stuff like that. You can take a look. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your call. You know, a lot of times um, we think that we are helping good-hearted people who will continue to bail people out good-hearted people will continue to uh, try to just try to help. But you know, there's, there's two big problems with that. One of them is the primary reason is that it doesn't help. It doesn't help just to give to somebody who's not taking responsibility for their side of being given to. Now that's a really important principle in life. There is no zero, no relationship in life where each party does not have a responsibility. There's just no such thing. It's wired into the created order of the universe. Even when we are on the 100% giving side, which sometimes we need to be, and somebody is on the 100% dependent side, which sometimes people find themselves, that's okay. But even then, the one on the 100% receiving side has responsibilities for that role.
You've heard the phrase roles and responsibilities. The giver, the helper has a role in that relationship. I am going to help you. I'm not going to take from you. I'm going to give to you. All right. But the receiver has a role. I'm going to receive from you and I'm going to use what I am given. All right. And I got to receive it and I got to use it. And that's built into life. Even an infant lives under this law. Mommy can show up with the breast, deliver the milk. It's there. I'm giving to you. Not asking anything from this kid to give to her. What does the kid got to do? What does a baby have to do? Baby's got to suck. The baby's got to take it in and use it, and their body's got to metabolize it. It's got to break it down. It's got to turn it into good stuff. All right? And sometimes they don't do that. Now, I'm not blaming babies here. Don't send me an angry letter. But sometimes their system doesn't do that. I'm illustrating a principle that there's there's work to be done on both sides. And their bodies have got to have got to, first of all, be able to suck it in, right? To take it and then to break it down. And when babies can't do that, what do they have to do? They have to stimulate them to get them to do their job. The baby's got to, you know. Sometimes our heart's not going, we got to stimulate it to get it beating. Sometimes there, you know, there's a lot of stuff we want to get this kid's body doing its role and its responsibility. And that's what good therapy does. It helps bodies do what they need to do in order to thrive. I'm going to physical therapy again today for my knee. A therapist has a role. She's going to do stuff. I've got to receive that help. And I'm the one that's got to move the muscle. I'm the one that's got to, you know, get an eighth of an inch more, you know, <laughs> flex range of motion today. Everybody's got a role. And with addicted families, what the, what the family doesn't do is it doesn't require anything from the addict. So they stay addicted. The family is doing the sucking for them instead of requiring them to do what they can do, which is you could go to a meeting. You could start to talk about your problem. You could take ownership of the struggle. You could begin to work the steps. You can do that. Everybody's got a role in this. The psychologist sees a patient. Psychologist is there to help. Psychologist tries to take from the patient. That's malpractice. No, you're there to give, but the patient's got to use what's being given to them. We all have a role. And that's the first big problem in addicted families is they don't require anything a lot of times from the one they're giving to. So what you're doing is you're investing in non-performance and we get an investment grows. So the non-performance grows when you continue to invest in it. The addiction grows. You keep investing, you're going to get a return on your investment. But if you're investing in further addictive behavior, it's going to grow. So we stop the investment until we see, I'm going to use your investment to go get treatment or go get help. And then the second big problem is Sometimes not only does it not help the addict, but it hurts the one who's giving. Sometimes they get taken into losing everything they have. So there you go.